before I go on, I want to show a few compounds, acids, cannabinoid acids, which are present in the plant more than they're present in, in dried marijuana or dried hashish, because they, they change, they decarboxylate, uh, and uh, they turn into THC or in cannabidiol. But these compounds, they have, people have not looked into them. These compounds are uh, potent anti-inflammatory agents, and they have no uh, CNS activity, to the best of my knowledge, and nobody has looked into them since we published their, since we isolated and published their structures uh, many, many years ago. I wouldn't tell you when. Don't want to look that ancient. But uh, uh, we published them. We looked and saw that they're anti-inflammatory. As a matter of fact, we tried to look into the literature, and it turned out that um, a Czech group in uh, one of the small Czech towns in, in Bohemia had a mixture of these compounds in their hands in the, early, in the late 40s and were using them as an anti-inflammatory mixture for um, uh, inflammations in ho uh, on horses. They were just putting the mixture on on horses and then the inflammation uh, just disappeared. Nobody has looked into them since. In marijuana, they don't exist because they decarboxylate on smoking. But if people use the, uh, the extract of the cannabis, then probably most of the anti-inflammatory portion, most of the anti-inflammatory uh, activity is due to these particular acids. But uh, the compound that we isolated, 1964, uh, tetrahydrocannabinol, THC, has been looked into in, a, in great depth. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I got an email from a young fellow in Hungary, I don't know him, and he wrote me, congratulations on the 40th anniversary of your paper in the Journal American Chemical Society on, uh, on this compound, on THC. And um, uh, I was kind of uh, uh, surprised and uh, happy, really, and felt extremely ancient. After all, that's 60 years ago. But there has been a huge amount of work on THC. And indeed, for the next uh, uh, 20 years, people got to know a lot about the chemistry, a lot about the clinical effects, a lot about the uh, biochemistry of THC. One thing was still unknown 20 years later. I mean, I'm speaking now to 1964 till the mid-'80s. Nothing was known about the mechanism. How does THC act in the body? And the reason for that was a mistake in the literature, a mistake in research. And I'll tell you in a few seconds about it. And um, uh, therefore, people didn't know whether this compound acts on something on the body, a, a receptor, a, 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 an enzyme, anything of that sort, or was just a very general thing. People thought that it acts like an, an a, anesthetic, like a general anesthetic acting on membranes. Uh, and even the head of uh, 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 a pharmacology at Oxford, probably the leading pharmacologist in the world at that time, uh, w thought that it acts uh, um, yeah, I told that it acts on, uh, on membranes. Anyway, the reason for that was uh, really a mistake, and we should always realize that mistakes uh, do occur. Uh, for a compound to act on a specific uh, uh, enzyme, a specific receptor, anything that's really biologically there, it should have a very specific uh, 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 stereochemistry. It should be built in space in a particular way. If it, there are two possible kinds, one is a mirror image of, of the other, the two of them should not act the same way because they cannot bind. Um, the, the enzymes, the receptors, all of them are built in a very specific way in, uh, uh, in space. And therefore, the other compound that will act on them has to be built uh, so that it will be able to attach itself. The other stereoisomers will not. Well, in this case, both compounds were active, both the plus and the minus. The minus is the natural one. The plus, which we had uh, found a way to synthesize, also was active. Well, not to the extent of the first one, but to about 20%. So people said, well, these compounds don't act on enzymes. They don't act on receptors. Who knows how they act? Well, it turned out to be just wrong because we had synthesized a compound. We knew how to do it. We saw that it was being wrongly synthesized. People were buying 
starting materials from commercial companies, and the starting materials were not very pure. So we really purified the compounds, prepared the stereoisomers, and found out that the stereoisomer, the mirror image of the natural product, is not active at all. Therefore, chances were that the compound is indeed acting on a receptor, an enzyme, and something. And a few years later, later Alan Howlett, uh, in this country was able to uh, show that it acts on a certain enzyme uh, forming cyclic, uh, uh, working on cyclic AMP, and later to uh, find that there is a receptor, and this receptor was later uh, fully identified in, uh, at NIH. Uh, now, receptors are not built in our brain or anywhere in our body, of course, Animal, animal bodies because there is a plant out there that will produce a compound that acts on them. That just doesn't work that way. Receptors are found in our body because we produce compound that will activate those receptors and that's why there is a equilibrium, if you wish, between action and inaction those receptors and that's how one of the ways our body works. So obviously we thought that there should be uh, endogenous compounds which act on those receptors. The fact that there is a plant compound, a tetrahydrocannabinol, a THC, which acts on those receptors is just a quirk of nature, if you wish. Anyway, it's not because of these compounds that the receptors are there. So we worked very hard uh, for a few years, and uh, uh, 90, about 12 years ago, uh, we were able to identify, to isolate and show the structure and start biological work on a compound we call the nandamide, and ananda is a name in Sanskrit which means uh, joy. Uh, so anandamide, and it has been uh, thoroughly investigated in the last decade, uh, anandamide is a, one of the natural compounds which we produce uh, and which act on these receptors and do a, a, a lot of things, a long, long list of uh, actions actually. There is uh, barely a, a biological system, a physiological system in our bodies in which the endogenous cannabinoids, or in short, endocannabinoids, do not participate. Uh, they are involved with a lot of other things, but they are involved in just a long, long list. Now, there is a second compound which we originally found in the periphery, the spleen. Later, other people found it in the brain. There is a third compound, and then we have another compound which seems to act on the cardiovascular system and does not ca uh, act on the central nervous system, this we are going to publish shortly. So there is a l l large variety. The first two compounds, anandamide and 2-AG, are the most important ones. And they are found in those regions of the brain uh, where we really should expect to see them, in the regions that have to do with movement control, with uh, coordination, learning and memory, uh, stress, uh, cognitive function, etc., etc. Um, the physiological systems and conditions affected by endocannabinoids, and this is only a partial list, and a whole list will take uh, 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 quite a bit more space. You can see that even this short list has quite a few actions there, starting from appetite and feeding. We found that uh, 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 newly born mice, for example, that in which the cannabinoid system is blocked, do not suck. They die of hunger. They don't know they're hung hungry. They just don't suck, although their mother uh, wants to, to give them milk. But if we de-block the blocking agent, they're very happy and go and suck. And so on, the blood pressure, blood flow, etc., etc., down to reproduction and stress. Obviously, I cannot talk about everything here. Uh, it will take hours and days. and. Uh, uh, let's look at a um, summary which my good Italian friend Di Maso summarized the activity, which is really a summary. It says, well, what do the endocannabinoids do? They relax, help us eat, sleep, forget, and protect. Not remember, forget. And don't think that forgetting is less important than uh, uh, recalling. We, we should have a system to forget Otherwise, well, if you wish, we can burst. If you go down a mall and see a thousand faces, do you want to remember all of them? Of course not. Though this is uh, 
but there are also other memories, and I'll be, if I have the time, I'll speak about it. There are memories that we certainly try to forget. Otherwise, each one of us will be in a constant trauma. Uh, 